with all of this complete we can now export it and you'll see no errors up to this point let's go ahead I believe I created this folder so go ahead and create a scenery folder let's make a new folder for this and call it beacon and that's what I decided the scenery will, scenery will be inside here make the familiar folder models but also make the folder physics now obviously I'm skipping over uh, the texture of it because that would take extra time and really I'm just showing you how to do scenery but for your uh, scenery remember to make a bitmaps folder and go through the usual process of turning those bitmaps into textures in the models folder go ahead and save whatever you want to call your scenery I'm just gonna call it beacon you'll see it exports fine with no problems and now we come to an interesting piece in our tutorial we need to create some physics for this object so that it knows where to bounce off bullets and etc but we have this weird thing with an open edge we have this perfect sphere and halo doesn't like either of that I'm going to go ahead and save this right now as beacon look and then save a copy of it as beacon feel as you may have guessed halo treats how the scenery looks and how the scenery feels as two different things so what we can actually do now is take this mess with how it looks going to that multi-res and shrink it down to something that Halo can deal with then we can go here and actually completely delete it but first let's go here let's make a pyramid right Then I will delete our top box here, take this pyramid, convert it to an editable mesh, take the top vertex, I'm going to go ahead and chamfer that a bit, take this top here and pull it up, and now we've created an object that we we chamfered a vertex and we pulled a thing up we never broke any part of it so there are no issues with this so it's perfectly valid uh, halo material we'll name it the same thing so we have our top and bottom we apply the material to the whole thing and we double check all of these make sure they're all set to one that's correct relink this to the bottom double check our hierarchy bottom is in bottom tops and top and we can now export this once more this time go to your physics directory and save it the same way you saved your models with the same name except you add underscore collision after your name and before dot JMS so we save this one as beacon underscore collision okay now that we've exported it we want to go to our familiar tool and recall that with building levels we use tool structure in this case we don't want to use that we want to use something slightly different tool model the syntax for tool model is exactly the same uh, so instead of levels we do scenery because we have data scenery this time and we have our scenery object right here in beacon so let's go scenery beacon
give it a little while there we go okay so we s remember that material I made I just called nothing uh, we're also gonna call this shader shader model uh, because this is not an environment it's also not transparent or glass or whatever uh, so we're just gonna make it a model it's gonna say failed to import whenever you define this this is totally normal just rerun the exact same thing remember you can press up on your keyboard just to get to the last command and rerun that <coughs> okay so we see here our detail level our worst case vertices worst case triangles uh, computers have really improved since then and this really shouldn't be a huge deal unless you're trying to make something very very high definition most of I've never made anything where these have to be different. So what this is basically saying is that no matter what detail level it's set to, it's always going to be the same. I'm not even sure what setting in game would change that. But uh, like I said, it's not terribly important right now. Remember that we made our visual model, our uh, what's going to be called the GBX model. We also made a collision model. So we're actually going to have to run this a second time. This time with the command collision geometry. Using the same scenery beacon, so same folder. And notice that it immediately knows to look for this beacon collision.jms file. This is why you have to name it specifically with that underscore collision after it. Created collision model scenery beacon. So what this means is we can now go into our tags directory, into our scenery folder, and you'll see it created this folder right for us next to all the other built-in scenery. And here we have our look model and our collision model. You'll notice though that there's no actual scenery yet, so this is where Gorilla comes into place. All right, new. scenery now if you're following along with my tutorials I bet you've never had to create your own tag you've usually opened and modified stuff but gorilla can indeed make its own tags and you can see all the different types of tags available to you uh, I'm not sure that all of these make sense to create from gorilla uh, for instance you can look at a scenario and scenario structure but obviously you wouldn't want to try to use that through Gorilla because most of that is processed through tool. In this case though scenery is something we do want. We look at the options up here and these are very self-explanatory. We have our model so we're gonna go back to that scenery directory and use the GBX model and go to collision model same directory and use our collision geometry. You'll notice if you try to do something, if you try to mix them up or whatever, that it'll turn red. So you'll know you did it right if both of these are black. You can also double check that these are the scenery uh, models that you want. If you open them, you'll see these are pre-built uh, with all these different objects. You can see first child node frame bottom. So this is the model for sure our collision model this also has our frame bottom so everything seems to have made it just right the next thing you need to bring your attention to is this bounding radius if it's at zero you can look at it but you can't touch it this is important because that means you can make scenery in the background that's completely invisible to the uh, player so they can shoot through it they can see it but it's not gonna affect the game at all what we want for this beacon however is we want it to exist it feels really weird for close-up objects if you can shoot right through them without it having any real reason uh, so usually just use this zero bounding radius for far off objects like huge ships in the background that you still want to look 3d uh, when we scaled our model you saw that I scaled it down to less the size of Master Chief and 
what I've said before and I will continue to say is that a world unit is approximately the height of Master Chief. It's not a very intuitive thing for most people to start out knowing, so I'll keep saying that. Because of this, though, our scenery is smaller than Master Chief, so we just want our bounding radius to be one world unit. Uh, I'll show you later on how you can actually see that and adjust it if you have a very odd-shaped object that you're not quite sure the exact size of it. Now this render bounding radius, you can see it says if set, this radius is used to determine the object is visible, set it for the pelican. This basically saves resources on the person's computer. If you have a very large and complicated object, you can set it so that it doesn't show up until they're within five or six world units away from it. That way, if it's very, very complicated, their computer doesn't have to try to render it if it's a billion miles away. Uh, we're not going to set it because it will automatically be set for here, and it's not a very complicated object, so we'll leave that alone. With that done, we do Control S to save it. Let's go to our beacon directory and we will name this beacon. And now we have our scenery tag. Let's go ahead to Sapien. Now in order to test out scenery and stuff you're gonna need a map. If you have your map from the last lesson that's great. I have created a map specifically for testing objects such as this. Welcome to Wild Render Laboratories. This is a little map I made. One of the perks of being a map maker is that you can make little things like this. At this zero of the target here is the very zero of the world. And every ring represents every point away from that zero that is one world unit away. Therefore, you can easily test the power of weapons over distance. Uh, it's kind of limited to only a distance of 12 world units across, but that's still pretty large of a distance. Uh, each of these lines on the wall represents one world unit, so if you walk up to it, you'll see it's just at your head, just like the height of Master Chief, as I said. Uh, so this is very nice for testing out scenery. So what we're going to do now is add our scenery. Oops. So you go to Mission, Objects, and Scenery, Edit Types, and then Add. And we see, I actually have been practicing this so it went right to it, but you want to navigate to your scenery directory, beacon, or whatever you named your scenery, and open that. If it pops up an error here, uh, which it very easily can, it usually means there's something wrong with the tag. So go back into Gorilla, open up your tag, and fix that. There was no errors here, so we're going to say OK, OK, right click, and change this type to Beacon. And there we go. You can see here we have our object. It's a perfect sphere, even though Halo usually doesn't like that and yet it's still collidable as I'm sure I can show you in game. You'll see the zero point for this object is the same zero point as we set for the frame. So that's why it's important where you place that. And you'll also see that it looks like our look model as I've been calling it and not like our collision model which is exactly what we want. So this is how you can get really complicated looking objects in the halo without having to worry about patching up all the holes. Uh, I should mention of course that if you want to patch up all the holes and you want a very precise collision model that's completely up to you but keep in mind that you will have to make a collision model that obeys all these rules so it may not be worth it at times especially when all it's really gonna do is make bullets bounce off it slightly more precisely and bullets don't bounce off and hurt people in Halo so I'm not sure that would increase the realism of the object so oh well there's also if you walk into it 
So make sure your collision model, that's one of the considerations, make sure your collision model <laughs> represents the object you're trying to emulate. So you don't want to walk into a wall and be able to walk through the wall at some points and out of the wall at others because you messed up your collision model. So, you know, match it up as close as possible. Ours might have a little bit of wiggle room because we taper it off towards the top. Uh, so we might be able to, like, hit parts here that we shouldn't. But since it's such a small object, I'm not thinking that will matter too greatly. Now, this thing's quite interesting to look at, but it doesn't really do anything. It's nice for decoration, but it's supposed to be a beacon, right? So, we're going to go straight into animating this thing. Usually, I go into Halo and demonstrate how it works, but there's so many parts to building scenery that you'll love and appreciate more being able to test it straight in Sapien rather than exporting this map and booting up Halo and testing it there. Of course, you'll want to do that at least once to test the collision model eventually, but especially when you're creating tons and tons of scenery, you don't want to be booting up Halo every single time. It takes too long. So that's what I love about Sapien is that you can see it works perfectly in game, and what you see is pretty much always what you're going to get. If you're concerned about your bounding radius, here's that trick. Type tilde, the same thing we use the, to type in radiosity, and use the command debug objects one. And you can now see this radius around the object. Now you'll see my uh, circles are a tiny bit off on the ground. They still match the edges of the ones, but they're yeah, they're a tiny bit off. Uh, but you also see that this one render bounding radius completely encompasses the object that we wanted to use. It's this circle right here. So if you're concerned that your render bounding radius or your bounding radius is too tiny, go ahead and use that command and you'll be able to see exactly how big that radius is and expand it accordingly. If you want to turn it off because you have so many objects and it's kind of cluttered, you could just put debug object zero. And there you go. Now, on to animating. 